Chapter 16 is concerned with strategic leadership. After the relevant discussion and consultation, it's the top management team of the organization that takes the main strategic management decisions. Moreover, the same people lead and guide others in the organization towards related strategic actions over the course of time. Strategic leadership is therefore a crucial component to gaining and sustaining competitive advantage, where appropriate, and adding value to the organization's activities. This chapter explores this topic by first considering the nature of strategic leadership. It then looks at three major components, namely the factors that make a good leader, how leaders can shape organizations using culture and style, and how leaders cope with power in the organization. Finally, the chapter addresses the five specific components of successful strategic leadership. So, what is strategic leadership? It's the ability to shape the organization's decisions and deliver high value over time, not only personally by the leader, but also by inspiring and managing others in the organization. Leadership, therefore, not only involves the chief executive, but the whole team at the head of an organization. Leadership involves balancing a number of factors relating to strategy. These include the outside influences that impact on the organization from changes in the economy to increase competition. At the same time, leadership also means inspiring and leading people inside the organization with a clear direction for its future. Ultimately, skilled leadership entails identifying and delivering the purpose of the organization. What makes a successful leader? There is no agreement on how to analyze leadership. Contingency theories are probably the most useful approach. They state that the choice and style of leadership is contingent on the strategic issues facing the organization at that point in time. The best fit analytical approach can then be used. It is useful in strategy because it allows each situation to be treated differently. So what are the styles of leadership? They can vary from shared vision to dominance. The style needs to be modified to suit the strategic situation, with other styles being possible depending on the organization and its environment. A good example of a cooperative style is Anne Mulcahy of Xerox at the beginning of chapter 16. An example of a dominant style is in case study 7 with Mr. Al Dunlap. It's well worth a read and is quite short. Related to style is the changing culture of the organization. Leaders need to analyze the current culture and consider how it might need to change. Organizational culture is defined as the set of beliefs, values, and learned ways of managing that govern organizational behavior. Each organization has a culture that is unique. Culture influences performance and strategic management and leaders have the opportunity to shape culture over time. In exploring culture, there are four factors inside the organization. These include the history and ownership, the size, the technology, and the leadership and mission of the organization. There are also some factors outside the organization that will influence internal organizational culture. These include national cultures, the corporate cultural environment generally, and labor and employment policy. The next question is how leaders cope with power and also with change. Leaders need to consider what is possible in terms of change just as much as what is desirable. Competition is healthy in organizations except when it degenerates into unhealthy conflict and political maneuvering. 
In working out how to cope with power issues, leaders need to survey power groups, leadership, the changed style of the organization, the adoption of learning adaptive cultures, and the nature of external pressures. Finally, there are five elements to successful and effective strategic leadership. First and most important is developing and communication of the organization's purpose. Second, developing and maintaining the, sustaining, the sustainable competitive advantage over time of the organization. Third, managing human resources and organizational decisions. Four, defining and delivering to stakeholders. And number five, setting ethical standards. Only leaders can do this. But then everyone in the organization needs to follow what has been set.